Hopefully you all will uh, be on camera because you know what? It's so much nicer to talk to people when you can see them. Mm -hmm. It's because then it's re it really is like a like a live audience here, and uh, I understand some people don't want to do that, and that's absolutely fine because you know what? As I always say, hypnosis is about having more choices. So you always have free will, and you always have the choice to be seen or not. Although we love to see all of you, and you all can unmute if you are muted um, for now, and probably for the whole thing because. I like to uh, have this be interactive, and I will be asking questions and moving kind of quickly since this is a quick um, webinar. And just to remind everybody, we do these the, generally, usually the third uh, Wednesday of each month, 7.30 to 8.30 Eastern U.S. time. And uh, I say usually unless there's something unusual happening, and then I hopefully will have the right date on my website, which is uphypnosis.com. You can always uh, see what the next one is there. And I am my own webmaster, which is kind of scary just saying it. But uh, I really work to keep it up to date. And it's fairly easy to update, thankfully, which is why I have it. So I don't have to pay someone else to do it. And I try to keep the, the next one there. I do want to announce that last month I had a technical glitch that kept me from yeah. getting online. And there was a bunch of people that emailed me and I was like, well, I'm sorry, but you know what, the universe. And it was right after I got back from the conference up in Orlando, the IACT IMDHA conference. And it was like for a few days, everything was just going crazy. And I didn't know what that was, but anyway, I got it fixed. And I uh, apologize if any of you were the ones that signed on to that, but it was, it was very well, uh, there was a lot of interest in it, and it was when sadness, sadness turns to depression, so a little bit heavier topic, obviously, but um, if any of you are interested in that, it will be next month. Uh, I had already advertised this one for this month by the time that happened, so I have to do my advertising ahead of time, so that will be next month, which will be uh, July 20th, so if you missed it, that will be there, and if you miss that, it will be at some point when I edit it on available, uh, you know, you can watch it on the internet or just email me and I'll give you the link or whatever. So there you go. That's the first announcements. Also, this is an IACT, International Association of Counselors and Therapists chapter meeting, it's considered. And these are always free, the, the third Wednesday usually of the month with a different topic each month. So I give, give out information about what's coming up. Um, last night I had mentioned I presented Pivotal Response Conditioning for the IACT virtual chapter on Facebook. It was a live uh, interactive um, webinar that they do once a month as well. And the, the virtual chapter, as I understand, isn't just for IACT members. You can actually watch it another free, and it's an hour, it's an hour and a half webinar every month that Michael Watson and Karen Hand host. And just wonderful people from all over the world, literally, because it's online as this is. And you can, uh, you can watch those, and if you are a member of IACT, you can watch the archived ones on the IACT or IMDHA websites, I think also carries it. So if you missed my Pivotal Response Conditioning presentation, you can uh, go there and watch it uh, probably within the next day or two. Michael Watson will have it on there. I also want to announce that Up Hypnosis Institute will be starting the next hypnosis certification training and certification on July 23rd. It's a Saturday, and June 25th is the early uh, registration cutoff where you can uh, save quite a bit of money by signing up early. It could, be, it could be also for people that are already certified elsewhere. I've had many people take this training because I'm constantly taking trainings and certifications. I've got many of them in many areas, even by the same people, because it's always I always get something out of it. But uh, if you're already certified, it's a much less price for people who are certified elsewhere. Um, people that repeat, and some people have repeated my certification, it's, it's ridiculously cheap to take it again, and it's always changing. So I've actually had some people take it three times over several years. And uh, people even that don't want to become hypnotists, it's a great experience to learn how to uh, work with hypnosis. And my first hypnosis certification training, I didn't know I was going to become a hypnotist. That was 30 years ago. And of course, the universe had other ideas for me. So here I am. So that's all the announcements. And let's get down to what we're here for. Does anyone here feel like you've ever in your lifetime had a block on something? Something you wanted to do or that you knew you could do or you should be able to do. And all of a sudden you hit that wall 
right? That metaphorical wall. Yeah, hopefully, you know, if we're all honest, I'm sure we all have had that. There's uh, creative blocks. I, I used to write songs in my previous, uh, I call it my past life, when I was in show business for 20 years before I became a hypnotherapist. And, you know, creative blocks are real. Mm -hmm. And so are emotional blocks. And so are mental blocks. You know, you could say memory blocks, you know, you might think about just any kind of life block. There's many different ways could, because it is a metaphor. And the nice thing about are all is everyone here a hypno, hypnotist? I know Cheryl, you are, right? And you're in my area, right? Yeah. I, I was saying I have, as soon as I saw your name, I go, I have this little note on my desk to call you. <laughs> <laughs> and I was reading it saying, we got to get together. So um, yeah, so, uh, you know, blocks are, are something, it's the way that our unconscious mind represents us feeling like we can't move forward on something or get to something that seems like we should be able to do or get to or accomplish. So again, as and I don't know if anyone on here, the ones that I can't see your faces, if, uh, if there's any non-hypnotists here, because I like to make this relevant for anybody, because again, we are all our own hypnotists, aren't we? When, when, our, when our creative imagination creates that block about something we want, it's, it's us creating it. And the good news about that is that if we create it, we can do something about it. Yeah. If, if, you, if you create the block, you can just, you can, you build it, you can destroy it. Right. And the interesting thing is people try to do something with their conscious logical mind that was created at the unconscious level. And sometimes emotional blocks, uh, I would say maybe even more than any other kind can be blocks that started, or at least the seeds were planted when you were very, very young and maybe don't even remember on a conscious level what it was about that started that. And even if you did know it, or somebody discovers it in a therapy session or something, you'd probably say, that can't be what this is about. That's not related to anything that this is keeping me from. Because again, the logical mind thinks differently than the unconscious imagination. And, and that's our emotional part of our mind. Um, at least that's, you know, the way I talk about it with, with the way I, my trainings go. So if that makes sense to anybody, if you're, again, if you if it's in your imagination, then your imagination is where you want to go to do something about it. So you can, one way to approach blocks, again, uh, it, most of you probably know the term, oh, there's Noah. Oh, Noah. I just talked, met him on the phone this past week. The term that most of you are probably familiar with if you've had a hypnosis training or read about hypnosis is internal representations, right? We call them IRs. The unconscious mind, when you get information in, it creates an internal representation of what it observes or what it's receiving from the outside world. And that's uh, another term for that. So our imagination creates, it, it, it makes up a story, it makes up a metaphor or a representation to, and that's what blocks end up being. Our block might feel like a brick wall. It might feel like a stone wall. It might feel like a mountain in front of us that we can't get over, right? Those are all blocks uh, at the representational imagination level. And one way to deal with blocks as a hypnotherapist or any other kind of therapist for that matter is to, where did Noah go? I, I said admit and he disappeared. I hope I didn't hit the wrong button and eject him instead. That would be very sad. Anyway, <laughs> so um, if you do blocks one at a time and if you're doing more like a, a CBT, like cognitive behavioral therapy or talk therapy of some kind, which there's many kinds, and even in hypnosis, we do uh, conversational hypnosis, right? Uh, that's part of it because it's all a communication. But if you're too much at the conscious level, and at least my uh, take on it and my belief system says that if you're only dealing with it at the conscious logical level, you could say, yeah, my block, uh, I think it's like this. So at the conscious level, you could say, what is the, that block like to you? And somebody might come up with something logical and they'll say, well, it kind of feels like, you know, I've got this mountain that I can't climb. It's just too big. And, and that might, you know, have some good effect on the person. 
if, if they do it on a conscious level and say, well, you know, what do you think you need to climb that mountain? But if you get somebody into a light hypnotic state and incorporate the creative imagination, which is what we access with, with hypnosis, is getting into that creative part of the mind, then we can ask those same questions and the person can still answer verbally in a light state of hypnosis and most likely is going to come up with a deeper level of understanding about what that block is about or what how it is represented so uh i wanted to mention i've got a a, a script that i use have used for many years that i wrote a long time ago that i used for my hypnosis training and what i did a, a while back is i turned it into a self-hypnosis script for black uh, crashing through blocks i think is the name of it so if anyone would like this uh script that's uh, written for first person so that it can be like somebody could actually, you know, it's got a little bit of instructions at the beginning to take some breaths and get into the state and then open your eyes. You can either read it or read it and do a recording play it back to yourself or whatever, however, but it's written first person. And if you email me, I will be happy to send it to you <laughs> at uphypnosis at either yahoo.com or outlook.com. Either one will get it to me. So uphypnosis at yahoo or at outlook. So, uh, so I think it's nice and it, I think it's a nice time saver and I have found it to be more efficient to go right away to removing all of the blocks. Why well, remove just one or one at a time when you can actually remove all of them? Now, that doesn't mean that in a single hypnosis session, you're guaranteeing that we're going to get rid of all your blocks today because it may or may not be possible. Because I figure, I always figure the person is only going to release what they're ready to release and what it's safe for them to release. And that, that you know, that each block is the same way until sometimes people have to build up some strengths and resources and clear some debris maybe, or some other metaphorical thing that they need to do before they're ready to get rid of some of those blocks because they all serve a purpose. Blocks are there for a reason. They're there uh, because of something. And a lot of times it's there to protect us or to uh, cause us to learn something first or to think a certain way before we're able to address those things. So uh, to remove the blocks, though, in a session with clients, I think it's nice to do it like the self-hypnosis uh, uh, script that I that I offered you all, to do it in, in a more... Uh, big picture, like we were talking about uh, before I hit record with Tupac and Judy, the forest, you know, go for the forest, not just one tree at a time, you know, and I always figure the unconscious mind, I have so much respect for people's unconscious, because you know, that is your inner protector. And a good ethical, moral, and well-skilled hypnotist, well-trained hypnotist, uh, can address these kinds of things, knowing that that person is truly only going to release things they're ready to release, to break through whatever blocks they already are ready to deal with, whatever, whatever that had been keeping them from previously. And I just respect that the person's unconscious mind will decipher which ones are ready to go and which ones aren't. So I like to incorporate it into a more metaphor of a wall made out of and, and I think the way I write it, I, most of us have seen scripts about a, a brick wall, right? Breaking through a brick wall or something. And through the years, I evolved it being a stone wall. And I'm sure I'm not the first person to come up with that metaphor either. But through working with hypnosis with people, mine ended up being stones. And if you say bricks, it has a certain symmetrical, specific shape, right? If you say stones... It's a little freer to me. I like to give the client a lot of freedom to let their imagination create it the way that's right for them. So I'm not going to tell them how big the stones are or that they're all the same size and shape. I just like to use the stone wall that represents the block because the block isn't usually about just one thing. At least that's my theory. So the way I like to present it is this stone wall that represents everything and anything that previously has inhibited or slowed you down or kept you from accomplishing this goal. And in that way, it can represent 
for their unconscious mind, those things that it knows about that may be beyond, and many times are, I'm sure you've found, as I have, that many of the things that have been keeping them from it, or at the unconscious level, they're not aware of what those blocks are. That's why they come to a hypnotist, right? Because I'm not figuring it out with my logical part of my mind. There must be something going on at a deeper level. And that's what's nice, that we can get to that in a safe and constructive way and help them to eliminate it. And sometimes at the end of the session, I'm sure some of you've had this happen, where neither of us know exactly what happened or what it was about. <laughs> and they go, I just know it's gone. Or I just know I feel better about it. Or Right? Yeah. I see some nods there, Cheryl. Yeah. So that's the nice part about it. And even though I am tend, you know, tend to be a little bit curious, it's nice when they do have some ahas that they can tell you about later. But usually the client doesn't care. You know, they just know that something happened and I know it's different now. And they're happy with that. So, and sometimes later it might come to them. Who knows? But so that's the thing. So, um, I don't plan detailed what I'm going to do in these in these sessions, and this is a pretty quick class. So what I'd like to do is just ask one of you that I can actually see, and I'm going to ask if Mary Beth would would play a little bit with me here. And I didn't plan this ahead of time. I don't even know exactly what I'm going to ask you, but I'm going to ask you just on a level of wherever you are right now in this in this session here, wherever your mind is and your emotions and your attitude. Um, I'm going to ask you, do you have something right now that you feel like is kind of in your way of something you want to accomplish? And I don't need to know what the goal is or what it is you're, you know, that's about. Yes. Do you I'm get a sense? To, of, yeah. yeah. I'm going to quickly shut the door to the room because oh, okay. it keeps coming back and forth. So. Okay. I didn't see him or hear him, but animals are welcome as long as they behave. <laughs> <laughs> I can't let my cats in because my cats will get up here and disconnect me. I already know that. Uh, yes, but okay. yes. So you have something that, that seems like it's blocking you from some goal that you have? Yes. Okay. If I were to ask you on a conscious level, I don't know how much you may have thought about this before, but uh, do you have some kind of a sense of, of a representation or what that, what that block is like for you? Is there something that, that you could... Uh, specify that, that it seems to be like, like a metaphor or representation, an image of some kind? Um, maybe, maybe it's a feeling, whatever, whatever. Yeah, I mean, it is just like, like, not something so much that I can't get through as much as something that's pressing down. Pressing down. So for you, it's yeah. something pressing down. And that's still a, a something inhibiting you. Right, mm -hmm. keeping you from what you're wanting to do or accomplish. Okay, mm -hmm. so I'm going to ask you to close your eyes just briefly. And again, I'm making this up right now. <laughs> just close, you know, because why not? Close your eyes and and think about that pressure. Is is that the word you used, or is that a word you would use? Something pressing down. You said. Yeah. Okay, and get a sense of it. where do you feel that the most as you're thinking about it. In my chest. In your chest. Mm -hmm. And yet the motion you made was like it's coming from above. Is that accurate? Yeah, it's kind of like it surrounds me, but surrounds I feel it more in my chest. Okay, yeah. okay. So it's a, it's a, it's a, is it a pressure you said or a? Yeah, a pressure or heaviness. A heaviness in your chest. Okay, so let your mind go to the center of that just for a second. And, and. I'm going to ask you if there's if there's a, a representation, a image, or a or a thing that could appropriately describe that feeling, what that's like. And I don't know. There may may not be, but maybe like a. Um... Kind of like a vice. Okay. And on a scale of one to a hundred, with a hundred being the worst, how how intense is that vice right now as you think of it that's keeping you from this thing that you want? Probably about 70. 70. So it's pretty pretty intense there. Yeah, pretty strong. Okay. So what I'm going to ask you to do is let yourself just think about that as a vice. Just go with that that metaphor, that object, if you will. 
and think about the vice and describe it to me as your imagination creates it to be more real as, as a good representation for what this is for you. In other words, uh, does it have a color? Red. Red. And again, not everybody's uh, visual, but usually we know, even if we don't see it, right? We kind of know just instinctively what something is like. And about how big would you say it is? How does it, how does it seem to be in size compared to whatever? It's, it's like my, my whole body size. Wow. It's, but a, it's, it's, a, but it's centered in your chest, you said, right? Yeah, I feel it mostly in my chest, but it's, it's like it surrounds me, but it's, it's. So it's a vice from all directions coming, yeah. coming in. Okay. And it's red. Mm -hmm. And if, if you were to guess how much it weighs, how much do you think it weighs? 50 pounds. 50. Okay. And does it seem to have, is it pressing? Is it moving? Is it vibrating? No, just pressing. It's not moving or vibrating. It just. But it pressure. is, but it does have some movement as far as pressure. pressure. Yeah. So it's kind of squeezing, so to speak, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now in a moment, not yet, but in a moment, I'm going to ask you to open your eyes and again, not yet, but when you do open your eyes, keep your focus on that object that, that you have in your imagination right now. And when you open your eyes, I'm going to ask you to look off to either the right or left of your computer screen and to put that vice off about two feet in front of you. Do you understand? Yeah. As if, as if you could take it out of your mind, your imagination. and just put it out there kind of in floating in space a couple feet to one side or the other view. Okay? okay. So you ready to do that? Yes. Okay. So do that now. Open your eyes, look to the right or left, either one you choose and stare a couple feet out there and just imagine that vice there now and tell me if anything has changed about it. Maybe it has, maybe it hasn't. Just tell me if it seems different at all or if it's the same. funny because when we were talking about it I got really hot uh-huh and well, um, while it was all around you yeah, mm -hmm, yeah yeah and I'm not quite as hot now oh okay so the difference is you're not feeling as hot yes okay wonderful but as far as how it seems out there as you observe it and imagine it out there floating out there does does it seem uh still as large as like you said it's as big as your whole body is it still that large? No, it's smaller. Okay, so how, how big is it now? Maybe three feet. Three feet, okay. Yeah. Beautiful. And is it still red? No. No. What color is it now? Silver. Silver. Okay, do you like it better, silver? It feels less intense, silver. Okay, I wonder if there's any other shade or hue or color it could be that would make it even less intense do you get a, a sense that that might be possible a different tone or shade or intensity yeah maybe if it was like white okay so just imagine it's just shifting into white now and see if that makes it less intense. Do you like that better? Yeah, that's better. Very nice. And it's smaller. It's smaller. Okay. Now I'm going to ask you to send it. I don't know if there's a wall or a window or something in front of you beyond that two feet mark. Just imagine as if, because you can do anything with your with your imagination, right? There's no limits right. like, like the physical world has. So just send it with your mind. It's only about, what, three, two or three feet now big. Go ahead and send it way off in the distance as if it could just float right through the wall or the window or the whatever, whatever is there, as if you could send it out just maybe, oh, 50 feet out. 
And just imagine it way out there now. And tell me what that's like. Hmm. I feel much cooler. It's cooler. Oh, nice. Yeah, it feels, and, feels, and that's a better feeling. Yeah, and it feels um, hmm, feels no, lighter, it, lighter yeah. around me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and now, now that you've done so wonderfully to this point, knowing that you have an amazing unconscious mind that knows everything that that thing's about, it knows all about it, way beyond what you may have already figured out, right? Mm -hmm. And to know that whatever is best for your well-being is what your creative unconscious mind, since it runs all the bodily functions and your emotions and everything, it knows what's best for you. So knowing that and trusting that it knows anything that isn't useful or helpful or necessary for you moving forward from this moment that that's about to just send it off and I and I'm going to let you decide if you want to send it off like a rocket out into outer space or just let it disintegrate in the heat of the sun or whatever you want to do with it just send it wherever you feel or sense would be the perfect place to send knowing that it's the things that your unconscious mind knows you you don't need you won't need ever again just knowing that, even if you don't know what those things are, just trusting it. So I see you smiling. So tell me what's happening. Well, it was funny. Even, even before you said, send it off like a rocket ship, that's exactly what I was thinking. All right. So because have you done I, that yet? Yeah. Yeah. Because I, okay. I, can, I can watch the, the rockets launch from Cape Canaveral from my Oh, porch. good. And so that's exactly what I was just picturing it. So you launched it off into outer space and, you yeah. know, it, it served whatever its purpose was here and it's done with that now and you won't need it anymore because your unconscious knows exactly what that was about. So now it's off and gone on to other galaxies, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so now come back here with us because, you know, that was kind of interesting and, mm -hmm. and just uh, tell me how you feel on that one to a hundred scale when you think about your goal or your thing that you've been wanting to accomplish? Gosh, like does, down to down to 10. 10? Yeah, I feel much, much better about it. Very nice. And now this is, it's up to That's you. Funny. It's funny, isn't it? <laughs> How the mind works, the imagination is. And, and for those of you who've trained with me, which I think is only Judy on this call, uh, that jumped in my head because it's, it's kind of, and again, remember that when you learn techniques as a hypnotist, you don't want to pigeonhole it and say, oh, this technique is for this and that, that kind of approach is for that. You know, it's all about how does your mind work? Because guess what? Most things that we're dealing with have the same elements and most hypnotic techniques have pretty much the same elements. They're just presented in little different ways, right? So this is in my hypnosis training. This is a uh, something that is, was, came to me that it's kind of off, uh, of our objectifying um, pain is what we specifically use it for. But again, I tell people, don't get stuck in thinking this is just for one thing. Mm -hmm. The ideas and the concepts are what work. And it's our unconscious creative imagination that works. So when you get an idea as a hypnotist, go with it and trust your client, your, in your case, my wonderful, uh, amazing uh, volunteer here that I kind of pulled into this and and trust that you know i i just know your unconscious mind wants you to succeed that's the only thing i really have to remember as i'm trusting whatever flies out of my mouth that may or may not make a lot of sense to my logical part of my mind right so i trust that you know your unconscious mind knows what you need and knows what you don't need anymore so you've got that number 10 now your logical mind now that it's back in the room and you're here to learn you know, can take that information and say, wow, isn't it nice to know that 60% of that block isn't something I'm ever going to need again. I must have learned the lessons or whatever, or I got what I needed from that, you know, and just trust that and say, it doesn't need to come back. It's gone. It's, it's, it's out there now. And that you can now pay attention to where you are and whatever that 10% that's left Maybe something that you still have to uh, do something before you're ready to, to uh, discover how to, you know, get over, through, around, or whatever that. 
right? And again, lessons learned and strengths that we gather and resources can help. So that that would be that's a way of just totally. And that wasn't I, that wasn't anything like what I planned to do on this call. <laughs> and uh, hopefully, I can do what I you know something at least in line with with more what what the scripting that I've done for this is about. But it's nice to know you can you can take something like that and just trust the unconscious mind to take care of it for you. And your emotions and your gauge of how you feel now compared to the beginning of that tells you everything you need to know, right? And now it's just a matter of, well, okay, there's still 10% there, but that feels a whole lot better than that 70%, right? Oh, yeah. And yeah. Now, now you've got more open space to discover what else you can do towards whatever your goal is that that was about, that I assume is something you're, you're working on. and yeah. and. The unconscious mind, now that that's gone, is freed up to start giving you some more creative ideas about how to reach your goal. Mm -hmm. So that was interesting, huh? Yeah. Now, yeah. like I said, yeah, yeah. Like I said, that you know, it's if we remember that what is uh, the representations that are created by our unconscious are there for a reason, again. And it's only going to let go of what we're ready and safe to let go of. I trust that. And does anybody else have a comment or a question about what we just did? Or something to add that maybe you have uh, done or that you have uh, an idea about or that you've done with clients that you'd like to add to this? Tupac, maybe, or Judy, or... Yeah, Cheryl. Yeah, this is something I actually... Uh do something pretty similar to this a lot, um, especially when, uh, you know, there something's really active in the person's body. Uh -huh. And then we see if we can move Go into the, the center body. of it. Yeah. 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 So, so that's, that's good. This is a good confirmation yeah. for me that it yeah. works. <laughs> there you go. And the reason it works so beautifully for pain, which is the thing I teach in my hypnosis class, again, it's not just, you know, but a similar thing for pain is because here's the thing. Once the client knows they can make movement on it. Now they've got some sense of control over it, right? Because before they come to see us, it just feels like it's there and it's, it's in my way and I can't do anything about it because they've been trying before they come to us, usually a lot of things before they come to us, right? Tupac, did you have something to add? Yeah, normally I... I use the logical with them, trying to rephrase what we express. Most of the time, we affirm something negative. So the issue with them is, at least in my way, to teach them to rephrase and put it positive. Many times people say, oh, I'm gonna buy a, a, a lotto ticket, but I never get out said just say i want to buy a ticket that's it don't add it but so please erase the word but because every time you put the but you're killing right yeah that's that's the reframing we talk about and that's we do that all the time with clients because again the way that they're framing it for themselves in other words the way they're thinking about it right now is creating their current reality and if they keep thinking about it like that, they're going to keep recreating that same reality. So reframing is really the, you know, you said it perfectly, Tupac. That's really the main thing we're doing. And that's that's really, in a broader sense, what we just did with Mary Beth, right? We reframed how you were thinking about that. I'm sure you never thought about it exactly that way before you came to this crazy class, right? And, and it was so far in the, in the realm of the imagination that it takes you out of that logical limited, I call it limited part of your mind and gets you into that unlimited mind where more can happen. There's more possibilities there. So yeah, exactly. It's all reframing and changing the way we think about things. And with, with pain, again, if you do objectifying pain, it's real easy. Pain is one of the easiest things to get movement on once you get them involved with this kind of a process. Because for most people, it's so bizarre. They don't know what the heck you're doing, first of all, which is a good confusion technique, which, of course, gets them more into the creative imagination. And, and 
if if people can't make their pain less, everybody very easily can always make their pain worse. And most people, even on a logical level, if you say, have you, have you ever had a time when you actually made it worse? Not intentionally, of course, but most people say, yeah, the more I think about it, the worse it gets. Well, yeah, <laughs> and that's the whole point. So you think about as soon as you put somebody's attention on it, if you're a, if you're if they're in the clinical if in the hypnotherapy setting, if you get somebody to think about it uh, and and really focus on their discomfort, it's going to get worse. And if we want it to get worse, we're going to call it pain, of course. Once we start working with them to make it better, which is going to be very quickly, hopefully, once they get to our office, then we're going to start calling it discomfort because it has that embedded command for the unconscious that now we're moving toward comfort. And we want to still acknowledge where they are now, but we're going to start softening and reframing, as Tupac said. We're going to reframe our language. And the unconscious mind, even if the conscious mind doesn't pick up on it, the unconscious goes, oh, now we have a comfort scale. Now, instead of moving to the to the hundred side, we're moving to the zero side, right? We're moving down that scale to the comfort level. And we start changing the language. So that's what it's all about. With the process that, uh, and I, I don't think I'll have time to do this. It'd be nice to do it as a group, but uh, I'm not sure if that's going to be something we'll have time for. But um, as far as the stones, like I said, when I do uh, crashing through blocks, blasting through blocks, whatever you want to call it, uh, I like to create the blocks. Because usually, it, for most people, it won't just be one block. They feel like they have a bunch of things that are in their way, you know. I need this and I got to be more of this and I, you know, I haven't been able to that and there's a whole bunch of stuff. And then again, there's the rest of it that's at the unconscious level that may be things from their childhood that they don't even know are blocking them. So in order to cover those, I think it's nice to get someone into a hypnotic state. And again, it may not be the only thing they need from you that they have to do to get to where they want to be, but it can really get rid of a lot of that perceived blockage to what they want. If you create for them in a light hypnotic state, and I believe light state is all that's needed for most things, and get them to imagine a stone wall in front of them that represents, this is where you actually assign the metaphor, but everybody can imagine what a stone wall would be. And again, it gives it enough freedom that you don't say brick, which is a certain shape and usually red and that kind of thing. So they, their stones uh, after words, you can get a lot of detail and find out how visual they are, or how much uh, their representation was specific for them. And it'll be different for everybody. And if it's a stone wall, the way that I represent it, uh, the way that it evolved through the years for me is that instead of assigning, like at the beginning in the pre-talk, you find out they've got some fear, they've got some doubts, they've got some uh, self, um, self-esteem self issues, some lack, lack of confidence, whatever it is that are the perceived at the conscious level that they'll tell you are things that they feel like have been inhibiting them getting what they want. You can actually uh, have them look at this stone wall and and get them to understand that it represents everything and anything. Again, I like to give it as much space as possible for their mind to explore everything and anything that has ever inhibited you from reaching this goal. And this can be for a weight, uh, weight goal. It can be for quitting smoking. It could be for an addiction. It could be for anything, for healing, anything. And just say anything that's that's inhibited or slowed you down or kept you back in any way from being able to do everything that you're capable of doing. Because if they're if it's not possible, it's not going to happen anyway. And again, we don't want to promise anything, but there's, I believe, always more that can be done. And that's why with hypnosis, we can access those inner resources and we can start eliminating those little lingering things that they picked up as humans through their life that are those doubts and fears and limiting beliefs and self-doubts and all those things can start to be obliterated as it has to do with whatever they're asking help with. So each stone in a light state of hypnosis, of course, I'm, uh, if they did bring up a fear or a lack of self-confidence or something specific, I might or I might not, uh, I might say you may notice somewhere on that stone wall 
on a on a stone, there's a stone that represents that lack of self-confidence or lack of self self-esteem or that fear that you mentioned. So I might go ahead and get them to notice that that's those stones are there because each stone represents something that has been interfering and inhibiting them from reaching their goal. But then I always, again, like to open it up to more than what they may have already figured out and say, and you may or may not notice some other stones on this wall that have some, uh, that represent something else that you hadn't realized before. You may or may not recognize some new things that appear on some of these stones that give you insight into some of the things that have been keeping you from your goal. And just know that your creative unconscious mind, again, we have the, in the pre-talk, we've already explained to them the conscious mind, the unconscious mind, and how much more information is available outside of their awareness or what they may have learned about themselves. And give it that space so that each stone, that there's so many stones that all of them now, your unconscious creative mind knows represents things that you don't need anymore. Just like when I was working with uh, Mary Beth, talking her through that. Things that it's safe and it's all right and it's even necessary now to let go of. The only things that appear on this stone wall are things that are ready to be gotten rid of. Things that have outlived their usefulness or whatever words you choose to use to let them know it's safe to get rid of whatever's here right now. Now, that doesn't mean there might be more to do, right? And that comes up as you do the talking it through later. But everything that's here on this stone wall has, has outlived its usefulness. It has no value whatsoever moving forward for you in your life. And your unconscious has made sure you'll never need it again. So it's safe here today for you to find a way to blast through, to break through these stones. So the metaphor of the stones, you can either assign on, on the uh, script, I think I use a sledgehammer because somebody early in my hypnosis career said, you look to the side there and you notice there's this big sledgehammer. And you know what, even when I used the word sledgehammer with some clients, when they're done, when I was done, I remember one specifically that said, you know what, I know you said sledgehammer, but my mind wanted to make it a bulldozer. <laughs> And she was a woman and she said, and I got on that bulldozer and I just bulldozed that thing. And she said, you weren't, you were still talking, but my, my stones were already gone to dust before you even said that, <laughs> you know, because that's usually what I do. And I'll say, you know, swing the, uh, if I'm using the say sledgehammer, you know, breaking, breaking those stones up into smaller and smaller pieces. And once I've established that they represent any limitations, I don't bring up what's on them anymore because I don't even know what's on all of them, first of all. But the representation is what's important, just like when I was working with Mary Beth. It's about the representation because that's what your mind has created and that's what's blocking you. So you work with the representation and your unconscious knows what it represents. And then you find a metaphor for how to break through it, which your unconscious mind knows what that is for the person too, right? Because we might use a bulldozer or a sledgehammer or whatever, a pickaxe, you know, whatever you might say, your, un, your, your client might change it and, or they might just use what you said and it might be just in a different way that it gets rid of it. But what I usually do is have them break, break those stones up. Now they're just stones, just like when we're working with pain as an object, it's no longer the word pain. It's just this thing that we're dealing with. And those stones get broken up into smaller and smaller pieces. And I usually have them smash them until they just turn to dust. And then sometimes I'll say, now a big, a big wind comes up and just blows that dust off into the distance. And it just disappears. And now your pathway is completely free and clear. And you're able to move forward. Because I, I like to use pathway, another metaphor, right, for a person's life path. And I would set it up, you know, that they're on this path that they've been on to reach the goal they come to me for. And they've made many choices and maybe had many detours, but here's where they are now. And there seems to be something blocking their pathway. And that's going to be that stone wall. And again, it gives a lot of open freedom for them to 
you know, create it, whatever works for them. It's very beautiful, simple process. So that's kind of the one I wanted to present tonight with the limited time we have. We've got about five more minutes. So anybody have anything uh, that they'd like to add or some ideas or comments, anything? Yeah, Cheryl again. Well, yeah, I've, uh, what you're talking about here the last few minutes, I've done a similar thing where I have my client <coughs> excuse me where they see themselves where they are today and then see themselves off in the future where they want to be now what's there so it's the same kind of idea so what's that thing keeping you from getting to your future self and then we eliminate that block that whatever that is you know they're like well you know it, I'm a, there's a river between us well okay we know we need to build a bridge or you know whatever it is they need to do and then we go meet that future self, and then we do an integration once we remove Interesting. the Interesting. So to the future self and integrate. Nice. So, so do you have them go out to their future self and look back at what the block was? Is that what you're doing? And how did they get past it? No, we, we, no. the present self destroys whatever it is that's keeping them from getting to the future self. So whether we have to destroy something or create a way to get there, yeah. Then once we do that, and then we can meet the future self, then we talk to the future self, future self talks to them, then we do an integration. Nice, nice. Yeah, because again, this is a piece of a process. This is a piece of a session. It's, right. you know, and we always want to do the future pacing. We always want to take it out, you know, and that's where the pathway, now that that's gone, where can you go? So that's a beautiful way to do that. Now go out, you know, to, to that future you. And I don't know, do you have a time frame you usually use, like six months or a year or something? Or Yeah, it depends on, you know, what the topic is. You know, are they trying right. to, like, I used this one time with somebody that was uh, having, experiencing difficulty passing the bar exam. So there was a very, very specific time frame, you know, nice. like six weeks or something. So it would depend on very good. what the circumstances very good. are. And, you know, if you had the time and you wanted to elaborate it, now you could say, okay, now look ahead and... Nice. And then you can get some more understanding too, right? It gives you more clarity about what you did and how you did it. And you overcame and now you're here and everything's moving forward. Very beautiful. Judy, did you have? I'm sorry, go ahead. And always let me remind you that they did this. They did this. They did this. That's why, like you said, as much creativity as you can give them to create the answer, the more empowered you Right, exactly. Yeah, because we want them to know that they're the one that accomplished it. And now, now that you've done what you've done, what's possible for you now, right? Beautiful. Yeah, we don't want them to think we're the one. You know, we're just, we're guides. What is it? Eric Rose and my partner, he says, he says, we're uh, tour guides, uh, meditation with a tour guide, right? <laughs> I like that. I like that when he said, Judy, did you have something you wanted to add? Or? Uh, yeah, sure. when what I do with my people is, when um, whatever it is, you blow it up, you disintegrate, whatever, whatever you do with it goes away. Um, I always tell them that they have magic seeds in their pocket and they can, wherever they throw the magic seeds, what, wherever, whatever that was, what was, what is in that space now is they throw their seeds. And a beautiful flower garden grows and it grows immediately and it's lush and it's beautiful and all different colors. And then I send them out to the future so that they, whatever it was, they don't leave that, you know, they create something else there that is growing. Nice. And it is beautiful and the colors and, you know, just, and then, and then I take them out to create their future. Beautiful. I love this. Yeah. Um, O.F. Oh, that's me. I can't say. Yeah. What is your name? Odette. Odette. Faye. Odette. You look, you sound familiar and you look familiar. Do I know you? Um, maybe from, you know, art. Yeah. Yeah. Probably the radio show or something with art. Oh, okay. 
Well, I'm glad you made it on. I had several people I kept hitting admit, 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 and they weren't making it on. <laughs> I don't know what happened to them. But. I got involved in a work meeting, and then I lost track of time, and I'm like, oh, shoot, it was at 4.30. So. Well, uh, this is being recorded, and it will, within a week or so, usually I get around to editing it and putting it out on the internet. So if anybody wants it later, you can uh, email me at uphypnosis at yahoo.com or uphypnosis at outlook.com. Okay. Uh, or you can go to the uh, to YouTube and look up Patricia Scott Hypnosis, and all of these are on there. It's what? Some... Patricia Scott at, on you. Patricia Scott Hypnosis. If you just search on that in YouTube. Oh, okay. Cool. I put I put all of these uh, little one hour mini webinars out there within usually a week or so of of doing them. So there's been some interesting ones. Uh, I know we didn't do this at the beginning, but I really like to know who people are and uh, and where they're from. So I don't know if the ones that I can't see are online, but if you could unmute yourself. And just so we can, because again, I think we all learn from each other. I know I learn. I love to teach because I'm learning more when I teach. You know, Cheryl's here giving me ideas and Judy and everybody that's Mary Beth working with you. I'm learning something in Tupac and, you know, everybody shares ideas. And that's what these are about as far as all to share, whether we're hypnotists or not. We can still use the ideas because, you know what, we all have a mind. <laughs> well, hopefully <laughs> some days I wonder, but <laughs> some days more than others. But so if, if we could just introduce yourself, who you are and where you're here from, and if you are a hypnotist or not, what your interest in this is in, uh, you know, three or four sentences. Judy, why don't you start? I'm Judy Cosentino. I'm from New Jersey. Um, I've been a hypnotist for many years. And um, I took Patty's medical class. Um, I've taken a trauma class and pretty much gone the gamut of, of everything. But I do... Um, my specialty is anxiety and sleep. <laughs> Very good. How about you, Mary Beth? You want to introduce yourself? Um, yep. Yeah. Hi, I'm Mary Beth. I live in Florida, just outside of Orlando. And I'm a new hypnotist. I just got certified last year, so I'm still learning a lot. And I met Patty at the IAC conference, and she was amazing. And so now I'm following her, and she's given me so many great ideas. And that's what I love about this. It's it's incredible to me how giving all of the hypnotists that I have met have been with just their knowledge and their information and the helping. It's not like in so many other businesses are like, oh, no, I can't tell you my trade secrets or anything like that. <laughs> Everyone is just so helpful. So I don't have a specialty yet, but I'm I'm figuring it out. So. That's sweet. <laughs> so you'll have to come to the HEA thing in November in Orlando. Yes. 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 I'm going get to, to get to see you again. Yep. Cheryl, you want to go? You want to go next? I am a clinical certified transpersonal and interpersonal hypnotherapist. Uh, had a private practice in St. Pete. Actually been in the Tampa Bay area for 10 years, but my main office is in uh, Pinellas Park. So I, I call myself a full service hypnotherapist, but I tell people that if they think about it, I can help them with it. But my real hot button, what I really love, is the spiritual counseling side of hypnosis and doing uh, mm -hmm. past life, inner life, um, even, you know, the strange stuff, alien abduction and time loss and that kind of stuff. So. Nice. And if I've talked to you much before, I probably brought up Shelly Stockwell, mm -hmm. who has a, a beautiful metaphysical or uh, oh, yeah. spir spiritual hip hypnosis, mm -hmm. spiritual hypnosis certification and class that I was on the first one and it's it's beautiful she's uh, uh, hopefully going to be uh, with this Florida group she's I'm going to hope to get her for our next um, living legends because she is a living legend she's got stories that are unbelievable yeah. and uh, so hopefully she'll be on that uh, coming up in uh, the end of July so keep an eye out for that Tupac thank you Cheryl Tupac my name is Tupac uh, I live in Miami I'm doing hypnosis for the longest time, but my major concern or concentration is the healing. I use every modality that I learn and mental in hypnosis. I use hypnosis as a tool to help the people to heal. One of the beautiful things that I do in we were talking at, at the beginning is the reverse. Basically, 
when we are born there's a lot of problems that the doctor medical anybody midwife doesn't know they cut they do they are in a hurry and they created a lot of problems with the kids one of them was animosity with the kid against the father or the mother depend how they absorb the problem those can be solved under hypnosis bring them to the moment they were born that's Very why I lab I use it I practice I have great result and basically but my main job is I am an engineer I'm a <laughs> professional engineer how yeah. medical things I married, I married one of those they're interesting yes. interesting minds they have <laughs> So Tupac, good for you. You got both sides of your brain working overtime there. So yes. what did you say you call that rebirthing? Rebirth. Rebirth, yeah. Rebirth. What? Rebirth. Rebirth, yeah, yeah. Very nice. Thank you, Tupac. And hopefully we'll see you in November as a presenter up in Orlando. I will. Thank you. H-E-A. Okay. Um, oh, what was your name? Odette, was it? Yeah, I'm up. Um, I'm originally from Illinois, but I live in Arizona right now in the Peoria area. And um, I'm in the last year or two, I've gotten certified in hypnosis and NLP. And then my main job, um, I work for Blue Cross Insurance as a talent development specialist. So how do I say it? It's like, oh God, with the ethics departments and everything, you have I have to be careful. But I do incorporate some of the techniques very subtly in what I do with training or if I'm working with people one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. And I too, like Mary Beth, I'm trying to figure out what my focus would be. <laughs> very good. Where are you from in Illinois? Um, well, I um, lived in Barrington, Lake Barrington Shores. It's like Northwest of Chicago by about 50 minutes or so. Okay, because I, I, I was born in Troy, Illinois, which is a little dot in the road just outside of St. Louis, across the river. Uh, you're south, I'm north. Of, yeah, yeah. It's for two different worlds. <laughs> yeah, when I was in high school and underage, we drive across to Wisconsin and drink. There you, go. No. there you go. <laughs> the wild side of Illinois. <laughs> drive through the countryside. Nice. Well, it's so nice to have you here, Odette. Thank you. I'm glad I yeah. made it. What's that? I'm glad I made it. Oh. Me, me too. And like I said, we got it all recorded. So hopefully there was some good stuff you can catch later. Uh, I don't know if Nancy or Shamita or Paul. Nancy said she's driving. Oh, okay. Is Yeah, I, I, I don't have time to look at the chat thing. So if somebody puts something in there. Oh, okay. I see it. Okay. So if anybody wants the handout again, I'll say it one more time. Paul, are you on or no? Shamita, Sh I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. There's Paul. Hi, Paul. Hi. You've been Hi, here the whole morning. time. We just couldn't see you. Look at that beautiful little girl. Oh my God. Look yeah, at um, I, I'm, I'm from Texas. I'm from Houston. And uh, well, now now I live in Taiwan. And, and uh, yeah, so, so we're just waking up. That's why oh. my camera is off. Yeah, so. yeah. Uh, I've been doing hypnosis for a little bit under a year, so I'm I'm guess I'm pretty uh, I'm pretty green. So I'm just trying to get as much um, knowledge and and uh, information as I can. Uh, mm -hmm. I've been uh, trained and initiated at the Foundation of Shamanic Studies for uh, about six years. So I've been doing that, and uh, I recently discovered hypnosis, and uh, I just um, I feel like it's very powerful. It's it's like you know. Like with with with, with uh, energetic healing and shamanic healing, it's, you you kind of have to rely on someone else to to help you, and that's why I think hypnosis is so powerful. It's like you give the the client the, the power to to heal themselves, and so it's I think it's really amazing technology or a technique that that uh, that we have. So it's um, yeah. Well, well welcome to this amazing world. <laughs> And I'll tell you, are you are you a member of IACT or IMDHA or any of those groups? Or uh, no, I'm certified through NGH. Oh, okay. That, how did you hear about this? Uh, how did you hear about how did you hear about this? Oh, uh, just through a Facebook group. Um, I think I'm hypno, hypnotherapy hypno uh, Facebook. Okay. Group. 
Yeah, I, I, I started exploring a few other ones on there. Good, good. So if you're new to this field, it's it's fascinating. I've been I've been in it professionally for 30 years and I studied it for another 20 years before that. But you know what? We all have been hypnotists all of our lives. And we are all constantly every day re-hypnotizing ourselves, depending on what we're thinking all the time, right? So and I that's what I do love about it because I do believe we are self-healers. And as a hypnotherapist, the thing I like about this field is that we respect that we are guides that help other people find what they already have inside of them and help them to learn how to use it more efficiently. That's kind of the way I think about it. And, um, you know, if I say, yeah, if, it's, if it's not in there already, I can't give it to you because I'm not the creator, you know, but I can certainly help you access what is there, which is usually way beyond most of us realize what we what we've you know what we can figure out with our logical part of our mind so that's why i call it the unlimited mind you get in there and things get really interesting and it never will get old for me and i don't plan to get old either so <laughs> <laughs> i got a lot of time here so i'm so glad you're here stay in touch uh, if you want to be on the email list we do a lot of free things i know a lot of other people that do free stuff i mean there's it's amazing the quality of what you have available without even spending money these days and of course, then there's the classes that hopefully keep us in business enough that we can, I give most things away. So my husband keeps telling me I should have started a nonprofit instead of a corporation. But you know, it's it's such a great field. It's it, I can't imagine doing something that I don't enjoy waking up and just knowing there's something amazing that's going to happen. And, and it's for yourself. It keeps me young. It keeps me vibrant. It keeps me excited about life. And it just keeps getting better. I turned 70 last year. Actually, it's been six months ago now. So getting, you're moving on here. It's moving fast. But you know what? It, it really does just keep getting better. It's it's truly amazing what we can do with our mind and that, that other realm that some people might call spiritual or soul or the metaphysical or whatever words, human words we have for all of that other stuff that's available. And it's all energy, isn't it, Paul? It's all yeah, energy. Absolutely. Thought is powerful energy. And now we got these great imaging machines that we can see how thought affects our mm -hmm. brain and our cells and our DNA and all this stuff. So, you know, in my medical class, we really get into some fun things about all that. But you know what? You don't need to know all that. We all know it works. We all, we've all done things instinctively that we go, I'm sure, how did I do that? That's what got me into this field. You know, I did it. And then I go, I got to figure out what that's about. That was pretty cool. <laughs> you know? They said that wasn't possible. They, you know, those, those they people that think limited, you know, if you listen to that inner, inner mind, you'll do things that people will say, hey, you shouldn't have been able to do that. Well, as a kid, we don't listen to that. We just, we don't think about if it's possible or not. We just give it a shot and see what happens, right? So as adults, we can also learn to, learn to, you know, listen to our instincts, listen to our inner mind where that intelligence is that comes from wherever you think it comes from. But it's there, whether you whether you know about it or have it a name for it or not. So I really love working with everybody tonight. I don't think the other two people are on the Shemita, Shemita, Shemita. I'm not sure how to pronounce that one. But and Nancy, if you're hearing me, thank you for sh for showing up. Paul, I hope you'll come again. Uh, uphypnosis at yahoo.com. I will send you a handout that is a self-hypnosis script on blasting or crashing through blocks. I think it's called. It's written in first person. It's a nice little piece that you might enjoy. That's more like that last part that I was explaining with the stone wall and clearing your pathway so you can move forward kind of a thing. And again, it's a, it's a piece, right? All these things are just little nuggets that we can work into sessions are working with ourselves too, because remember to do it for yourself. Thank you so much for joining me. Any other questions? If not, we're over time, as usual, we started a little late. And thank you, just thank you so much. I, I really honor and, and, and enjoy and appreciate you all being here and hope you'll come back next month on July 20th for uh, when sadness turns to depression because we got I got uh, technically challenged last month when I was supposed to do that for the first time and hopefully the last time. And uh, somebody always says, Oh, Mercury's in retrograde. That's always the excuse, isn't it? So when is it, July 20th? It's uh, it's going to be July 20th, the third Wednesday of July. Yeah, okay. July 20th. 
unless it's in an unusual thing, uh, usually it's the third Wednesday of the month, and you can find it on my website, always uphypnosis.com, or you can just email me uphypnosis at yahoo.com or uphypnosis at outlook.com. I love you all for being here. Thank you. Go forth and do wonderful work. Explore yourselves, explore your clients, explore the world. The possibilities are unlimited, just like the name of my company. That's what UP stands for, by the way, unlimited possibilities. There you go. So think up and have a great evening or morning for you, Paul, <laughs> wherever you are. Take care. Bye now. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye-bye.